The Branch by Mireille Messier, illustrated by Pierre Pratt. It's past my bedtime, but I can't sleep. Maybe it's because I'm too excited about the holidays. Maybe it's because of the sound of the icy rain hitting my window. When I finally doze off, I dream that I'm wearing a crown of icicles. My tree is my castle. My branch is my throne. I am queen of the storm. Crack! Crash! Thud! My eyes snap open. What's that noise? I throw back my covers and rush to the window. Everything outside is covered in ice. It looks like the entire neighborhood has been wrapped in a heavy blanket of diamonds. It's beautiful, but a little scary too. Mom stands next to me at the window. Her breath makes a cloud on the glass. We're lucky the whole thing didn't come down, she says. What came down, I ask. That's when I see it. At the foot of the tree lies a big broken branch. I rush down the stairs and out the door. That was the branch I sat on, jumped from, played under. It was my castle, my spy base, my ship. I try to pick up my branch, but it's too heavy. I run my fingers along the bumpy ice. Can we fix it? I'm afraid not, says Mom. Can I keep it? It's just a branch. It's not just a branch to me. I played on this branch all the time. Mom touches the splintery part on the trunk where the branch used to be. All right, you can keep it for a little while. But I want to keep it forever. Well, you'll see, says Mom, squeezing my hand. I know that squeeze. It means probably not. As I look around, I see more broken branches. In the yards, in the street, stuck upside down in the trees. I watch my neighbors digging and scraping. They gather broken branches and carry them to the curb, making big heaps like beaver dams in the city. Workers in shiny coats are clearing the road. They climb ladders, fix wires, wrap yellow tape around trees, and put orange cones on the sidewalk. Everybody is so busy. I wish I could climb my tree to watch them, but I can't. My next door neighbor, Mr. Frank, is out with his chainsaw. The buzzing makes my ears ache, but I won't go back inside. I block my ears and guard my branch. I want to make sure nobody comes to take it away or chop it up. Finally, Mr. Frank stops sawing when he catches sight of me over the fence. Why the long face? My favorite branch broke. Oh, I see. So what are you going to do with it? I shrug. It's just a branch. Just a branch? But it was your favorite, right? I nod. That's what I thought. The branch is full of potential. What's potential? It means it's worth keeping. Mr. Frank hands me a small piece of wood. What do you see? A piece of wood? Sure, but what could it become? Mom comes over carrying mugs of hot chocolate. Hi, Frank. I see part of your tree came down too. Yep, that was quite a storm we had. We're guessing what's hiding inside the wood, I tell Mom. Mr. Frank chuckles at Mom's puzzled look. I build things from salvaged wood, says Mr. Frank. With some imagination, each broken piece can become something great. I look at my favorite branch. It has potential. I concentrate. I squint. And then I have an idea. I know what my branch can become. I knew you would, says Mr. Frank. What is it? asks Mom. Is it a walking stick? A coat rack? A birdhouse? 
No, it's even better, I say. I cup my hand and whisper into Mr. Frank's ear. Oh, good idea. But I don't know how to make it. I can help, says Mr. Frank. I have the tools and I have the time. All you need is elbow grease. Mr. Frank's workshop smells sweet, like Sunday breakfast. We work together on weekends and sometimes after school. He shows me how to use the tools to make my branch into something new. We draw plans. We measure. We saw. We saw some more. We dry the wood. Then we wait and wait and wait. We plane. We make holes. We sand. Then we varnish. Three coats to make it last a long, long time. It wasn't just a branch. It was my branch. The one I sat on, jumped from, played under. It was my castle, my spy base, my ship. And it still is.